Let's go back to New Orleans, and where President Obama is speaking to the National Urban League we Convention. Can these conversations, let's be clear. Even as we debate government's role, we have to understand that when a child opens fire on another child, that there's a hole in that child's heart that government alone can't fill. It's got to be up to us as parents and as neighbors and as teachers and as mentors to make sure our young people don't have that void inside them. It's up to us to spend more time with them, to pay more attention to them, to show them more love so that they learn to love themselves, so that they learn to love one another, so that they grow up knowing what it is to walk a mile in somebody else's shoes and, and to view the world through somebody else's eyes. It's up to us to provide the path toward a life worth living, toward a future that holds greater possibility than taking offense because somebody stepped on your sneakers. That's the difference that we can make in our children's lives and in the lives of our communities. That's the legacy we must leave for the next generation. Now, this will not be easy. Even though it's called the Big Easy, this proud city and those who call it home, they know something about hardship. They've been battered again and again in this new century. One of the worst natural disasters in our history. The worst environmental disaster in our history. The worst economic crisis most of us have ever known. So sometimes being from the Big Easy means knowing hardship and heartbreak. But what this city also knows is resilience and determination and heroism. That's one of the reasons it is one of America's uh, jewels. It, it, it's quintessentially American because of its resilience. There's no shortage of citizens in this city who's stepped up in the darkest of times. And, and one person I want to want to end with is somebody that, that many of you know, the superintendent of schools in St. Bernard's Parish, uh, Doris uh, Vaucher. Now, when, when Katrina's waters rose, Doris and the faculty and staff of Chalmette High School saved the lives of hundreds of their neighbors, many of them old and sick, by moving them to shelter in the school's second floor. Two days later, they led 1,200 people to safety. The day after that, with her community in ruins, the superintendent was on her way to Baton Rouge to make sure her schools would open that fall. Failure is not an option, became her motto. When, when some government officials gave her the runaround, she plowed ahead on her own, secured loans, finding portable classrooms and books, and doing everything it took to make sure her kids, our kids, could return to some semblance of normalcy. When an official told her a gas line wouldn't be repaired in time for school to reopen and that her kids might have to eat MREs, she hired a local restaurant owner to cook hot lunches on a barge and sent FEMA the bill. On the first day of school, less than three months after Katrina swept ashore, she heard a young child who'd endured nearly three months of suffering and hardship yell out loud, real food, real food. That first night, she said, there were no riots, there were no disruptions, there were just hundreds of people just like you and the person sitting next to you in the blink of an eye having lost everything that they had worked for over their entire lifetimes, who now look to us for rescue, and we accepted that responsibility, because that's what school people do. Now, obviously, the superintendent is an exceptional educator and an exceptional citizen, but as I've traveled around the country, what I've discovered is that's not just what school people do. That's not 
That's what Americans do. That's what Americans at their best do. When I travel to, to Joplin, Missouri, that's what folks in Joplin do. When I go to Aurora, that's what people in Colorado do. In urban communities all across America, that's what you do. For more than two centuries, our journey has never been easy and our victories have never come quickly. And we have faced our share of struggles and setbacks and climbs that have seemed too steep, just like we do today. But we know what we're fighting for. We can see the America we believe in, a country where everybody gets a fair shot and everybody's doing their fair share, where everybody's playing by the same set of rules. And if we don't keep fighting as hard as we know how for that America, if we don't keep fighting for better jobs and better schools and a better future, who will? That was the president speaking That's at the National challenge. Urban League convention in New Orleans, Louisiana. When we come back, we'll have an analysis of we the president's quit. speech with Rob Shrum, Folks, Karen Finney, and Sam Stein. Stay tuned.